David Cohn joins us now. And David, let me ask you about Rodon. When and if that agreement becomes final and he joins that ro rotation, how much does that change the Yankees starting staff? Well, it gives them obviously that power lefty, but to me, it's the diversity of the rotation that really pays dividends for the Yankees. When you think about Garrett Cole going number one, and then you follow that up the next night with Carlos Rodon, now you've got a tough lefty in that lineup that might get neutralized, or you give a different look from the other release point, from the high uh, three quarters delivery from Cole to what Rodon gives you right over the top with that power fastball and slider. So. I'm a big believer in diversity. It's a completely different look, even though both of them are power guys. But the Yankees just, uh, they give you a different look every night now. Then you follow that up with Nestor Cortez and then Luis Severino. And then, the, then, then potentially some depth, too, at the fifth and sixth and seventh spot in that rotation. Rodon changes everything for me, not only from a power standpoint, but from a diversity standpoint. David, you know better than anybody that pitching in New York, you have to have the stuff to do it, but you also have to have the stomach to pitch on the, bright, the biggest stage in New York. What have you seen from Rodon or maybe heard from him that tell you he's ready for that challenge? Well, I, I can't really say that I've talked to him a lot, just a little bit in passing and covering him on Sunday Night Baseball the, the last year or two. But the one thing that really rings true to me is that he wanted the Yankees. That when he talked about, you know, the chance to come into the Bronx, he really kind of lit up when, you, when you, th you think about some of the statements he's made. I'm anxious to hear his press conference. But that's a big part of it, Flash, is somebody who really embraces the Yankee experience and wants to come to New York and understands what it's all about and also knows he's going to be pitching some big games down in September in the pennant race and then in postseason as well. David, you baffled and befuddled a lot of hitters with your own slider. When you watch his slider, how would you describe it and what makes it so effective? Well, I think it's the tunneling effect that he gets off of his four-seam fastball. I think he's really figured it out in terms of just simplifying his approach. He's basically a two-pitch pitcher now, but both of them really look similar coming in. And he gets such efficient spin, really high spin rate, not only on his finger, but his slider coming right out of that same plane and that same tunnel. And he's gotten to the point where he, he knows that those are his two best pitches and he's using them more often and with great success as well. He's had some arm injuries in the past. He's stayed healthy the last year and a half. How confident are you that the health concerns with his arms are, are in the distance? Well, I really believe that uh, when he got over Tommy John surgery in 2019, he rededicated himself and gained a lot of velocity by going, going into the, the trainer's room and taking advantage of some of the medical analytics nowadays and the power training and the velocity training that he talks about. The kind of, he said, you know, I've had enough. I'm going to get my body in top-notch shape. The Tommy John surgery kind of shook him up a little bit. And from that point on, He's really become a different pitcher. His velocity's up in the upper 90s when he needs it, although he he's, he's, has the ability to kind of save some in reserve, so to speak, and kind of add when he needs to in tough spots. And then he's also took a look at the videos and understands that, you know, my pitch design, my slider off of that four-seam fastball really plays well. Let me try to use those two pitches as much as I can. David, we haven't spoken to you on the hot stove since the Yankees reached an agreement with Aaron Judge. What was your takeaway about those negotiations and also just how vital it was for both sides to have that marriage continue? I thought it was a master class in, a, in terms of a, a player for the first time in his career becoming a free agent. I mean, if you think about Aaron Judge, all the years in the minor leagues, six years on the major league level, it took him the better part of 10 years, almost 11 years before he had the chance to become a free agent. And he played it as well as you can play it. I think he's worth the money. I think he's worth the contract. I think the surplus value that he's already provided plays big dividends for the Yankees on the back end of the contract that everybody talks about. Uh, that maybe, uh, you know, maybe those will be some rough years when he, when he gets in his upper 30s. But I think that if you look at the totality of the contract, if you amortize the value over the course of the years that he's been a Yankee, I think they'll be very happy at the end of the day, especially if they can get a ring or a couple of rings before that 10 years is up. And to get that ring, we know, David, that the Yankees have to find a way to get past the Astros. That's been a problem that, listen, the sort of stated goal was how do we improve ourselves to do that? They keep Judge, they sign Rodon. Are they on their way to doing that, also knowing that the Astros lost Justin Verlander from their rotation? 
Yeah, it's, it's, I'm not. You know, I think if you're a Yankee fan, you're not going to miss seeing Justin Verlander in postseason. That's for sure because he's been a tough customer. So you know, in my mind, I think the Yankees have matched up with Houston in the rotation. Obviously, you should, you should, tra you should track Verlander, and then you add Rodon on our side. Then you figure out, hey, maybe they've caught up on the rotation side. Now, I don't think the Yankees are done yet. I think they, they're going to fill out their outfield. I think there's some potential uh, value on the trade market for the Yankees as Brian Car Cashman kind of plays this down to spring training. But I don't think we've seen the final, uh, the final addition of what the Yankees are going to look like. I'm interested in left field. I'm interested in the rookies, whether it's Volpe or Peraza and how much time they're going to get this year in the big leagues. David, I remember talking to you at the stadium last season where we were both playing GM in the booth because that's what everybody does, and you brought up the likes of Volpe and Peraza, and you wanted to get a peek at them right then and there. How excited should Yankee fans be about the future and the injection of such talent in the middle of the infield? I think they should be very excited uh, about both uh, Peraza, the guy they saw, and then obviously Anthony Volpe, the guy that's the number five prospect in all of baseball. So yes, all eyes are on Anthony Volpe in spring training. Is he ready? Is it going to be spring training? If he has a great spring training, is that enough to, to, to sort of uh, let, allow him to, to break camp and actually go north with the Yankees? I think that's the big question in spring training is what's Anthony Volpe looks like, and is he going to get a real legitimate chance to make this team out of spring training? Or is he going to need a little more time in AAA and let the Yankees kind of sort out the playing time on the left side of the infield and up the middle? All right, Coney, final question for you. I'm sure discerning viewers on Hot Stove would love to know, where are you coming to us on this broadcast? Are you in Reykjavik, on the moon? There's kind of an eerie glow behind you. Where are you? That's it. Well, you know, I couldn't quite make it home. I'm in Florida, and I couldn't quite make it home for this uh, this six o'clock hit that I had so I had to pull over and there's a little tennis center down here in Aventura Florida so uh, I don't want to dox myself not that it matters but <laughs> nonetheless uh, I'm at, a, I'm at a tennis center in Aventura Florida right now all right well if you get a chance work on your backhand a little maybe 15 minutes let traffic lighten up and uh, we'll see you again soon happy holidays thanks for having me on I appreciate it guys